So back in January, there was lots of internet type chat about Sony's fresh Xperia 1 Mark VI flagship phone launching just last month an MWC. But so far, not a sausage. Not even a vegan sausage, which I'm going to just assume is mashed up grass cuttings all sellotaped together. Here's what I made earlier. But to be honest, the lack of an MWC launch isn't too shocking because for quite some time now, Sony has generally avoided that Barcelona shindig and just done its own launch thing separately. And that suits me absolutely fine because the more phones that launch at MWC, the less time your Uncle Spurt has to pour Estrella Dams and Nachos down his throat. Now, the previous Xperia 1 model launched in May 2023, so you can expect a similar situation for the Mark VI. And donning my best Russell Grant pants, I'm going to predict a June release date for Sony's blower. Speaking of which, did you know that Russell Grant is still churning out the old daily horoscopes online? Or much more likely, a cheap AI bot pretending to be him is just spaffing out a load of bollocks every day. So my horoscope for today says, A workmate has got themselves into a bit of a pickle. They will turn to you for advice. Honestly, what an absolute heap of festering fecal matter. No, hey, Baldy, I need your help. I've got an accidentally murdered Kevin from a job by stabbing him in the face 37 times. Quick, help me chop up and eat the evidence. How uncanny. Techspert Weekly. So how much do we actually know about the Sony Xperia 1 Mark VI thus far? Well, recently there's been some rather heated online debate about Sony possibly boosting that display size from 6.5 inches to a whopping bloody great 6.9 inches. Seems kind of unlikely though, considering that stretched aspect ratio means that the Xperia 1 is already a proper tall boy. A near 7 inch screen would make it roughly the same height as Peter Crouch. To counter the inevitable height increase, some tech spots have suggested that Sony might shave off that thick top bezel by shifting the earpiece speaker to the top edge and actually using an in-display selfie camera instead. Although that would be a massive shame as that full view finish is one of the best and most unique features of the Xperia 1 series. And yes, before some genius points it out in the comments, I am aware that this is an Xperia 5 and not an Xperia 1. It's all I've got, all right? I'm sorry, I'm absolute human garbage and I should just go f***ing kill myself. Ah, you said it, buddy. Wanna borrow my stabbing knife? Now, some online speculation even points to an under-display selfie camera for the Xperia 1 Mark VI, same as what was found on that Nubia Z60 Ultra. And certainly that tech has progressed to the point where it's no longer complete cack. However, you've still got that trade-off that any selfies taken with these under-display cameras are, shall we say, less than stellar. In fact, it's kind of like taking a photo with a lens that's absolutely smothered in bacon fat, which, to be fair, in my case, is a definite improvement. Another recent rumour suggests that the 4K resolution might actually finally drop to 2K, presumably as a cost-cutting measure, which wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing. In the last couple of days, there's even been rumours that that aspect ratio will change, so the Xperia 1 Mark VI won't be quite so tall and thin, it'll sport a more conventional, fatter aspect ratio which seems to be backed up by the recent supposed case leaks for the Xperia 1 Mark VI. Although, yeah, as always, all of this could just turn out to be a massive steam and vat of rectal ejaculations. Well-regarded leaky bloke inside of Sony has also revealed what could well be the all-new upgraded rear camera setup for the Xperia 1 Mark VI, boasting a triple threat arrangement of 48 meg Exmor T sensors. And that is a definite improvement over last year's Mark V, where the ultra-wide and telephoto shooters were more basic 12 meg Exmor RS sensors. So this should mean that you get better quality, brighter, low-light snaps when you are swapping to those ultra-wide and telephoto lenses, and also generally more consistent picture quality when you're switching between the different focal lengths. And that telephoto shooter also appears to support a wider focal length than before, while serving up a 3x optical zoom and 6x hybrid zoom. As for the rest of the specs, well, the brains of the Xperia 1 Mark VI will undoubtedly be that spooge-worthy Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, which should mean that gaming is satisfyingly smooth. And in recent generations, Sony's smartphones have come packing a rather excellent gaming mode, packed to the tits with tools like high contrast mode and screen sensitivity adjustment, which gives even permanently pissed reprobates with crap reflexes and gammy thumbs like me a bit of a chance against filthy leery school kids who delight in calling me things like sus and as they smear my kidneys all over the nearest wall. 
It seems unlikely that Sony would fiddle with many other bits of the Xperia 1 series for the Mark 6. Those beefy stereo speakers are trouser-rousingly excellent and hopefully we'll still get that actual headphone jack for plugging in. And another 5000mAh capacity battery should mean stress-free all-day play, unless you're proper addicted to Genshin or absolutely rinsing the camera for all it's worth. What would I like to see added to the Xperia 1 Mark 6, I hear you ask if you haven't already clicked off the video. Well, a few little requests, including a actual face recognition would be nice, as much as I love the edge-mounted fingerprint sensor. And faster battery charging would be absolutely peachy as well. But my biggest want for the Xperia 1 Mark 6 isn't some upgraded spec or a spangly new feature. I just want it to be less testicle in jest than the expensive, so more people can actually maybe take a punt on it. And yeah, frankly, I think there's more chance of Elon Musk suddenly developing self-awareness and as a final apologetic humanitarian act, firing himself into the nearest asteroid belt. But preferably not in one of his own rockets because he'd probably crash back to Earth after all of five seconds and of course survive it on account of being a fluky c But anywho, that in a nutshell is all we know of the Xperia 1 Mark 6 thus far. But what do you reckon? What would stimulate you to buy the next Sony Xperia flagship smartphone or are you already well stimulated? Stimulate absolutely not the right word to use right there, I apologise. But anyway, now it's time for the part of the show that doesn't so much stimulate as violently thrust a crusty finger straight into an inappropriate orifice. It's viewer comments. Viewer comments. Alright, so let's kick off this week with Bry6314, you eat Bry, who says, I won't have anything bad said against Whitley Beer, it's the best toilet I've ever been to. I, to be fair, absolutely would not slag it off, it's probably the nicest place I've ever caught diphtheria. In fact, every visit there is kind of like trying to complete one of them Panini albums, but instead of collecting football stickers, you're collecting diseases. Oh great, tuberculosis, haven't had that one yet. Or ah, bugger, not crabs again. I've had that twice already. And Bad Acid says, all in caps, say shenanigans one more time. Well, consider it done, sir. The Black Dot says, big up Pep, Man City manager in the morning, top tier phone reviewer by night. And let me tell you, if I was on that Pep money, I certainly wouldn't be shooting videos about budget smartphones in a bloody garage. I'd probably be shooting them on a sun-kissed beach somewhere while somebody pours cocktails down my throat. Ice Day Golden says, will you ever switch to uploading in a 2x1 aspect ratio like MKBHD and other tech YouTubers? Hey look, if we've learned anything over the past few years, it's that I don't exactly do things the way that MKBHD does it. But frankly, it's a minor miracle I managed to upload anything that isn't just fuzzy out of focus shots of my chin with the sounds of screaming over the top. Some of my early attempts at video reviews looked exactly like that transmission from hell out of Event Horizon. Uh, Starnetic is asking which mid-range phone to buy. Well, oh buddy, or oh friend, or oh chum, have I got the video for you. Best mid-range Android phone, spring 2024, published just 10 days ago. Loads of fantastic options packed in there, so fill your boots. I would say I'd put a link somewhere up here above my bald bonds, but I think we all know that I'm just going to completely forget to do that. Because frankly, let's not even pretend anymore. I think I've put my bloody shoulder out just from sitting here literally reading things off a phone. And this is why we have whiskey. Next up, Skull Tuna Design of Sweden, quite a nifty name there, says, I wish there was a translate from Textbird to English for people who have not lived in England since the 14th century. I mean, I'm not sure that AI could cope with translating all of the bollocks that pours out of my mouth. That's almost certainly what drove Skynet to murder the entire planet. W. Scott says, always wait a few months after release to buy a Pixel phone. The price drops for Pixels can be significant. Yeah, they usually get some pretty good deals on the go. And uh, on that note as well, my Pixel 8 Pro review is actually coming at some point, I swear to God. And it's been uh, pretty much half a year since it's launched now, but it very much wasn't ready at the time. So uh, now that it's finally got the AI features and the camera's been tweaked, and fiddled about with and all that good stuff. I will be getting that review to you hopefully in the next week or two. Uh, Michael Bermula says, can you do a news roundup about the new upcoming Xperia phones? Well, what time and hope you actually watched this episode, Michael, and weren't too disappointed by the complete lack of research or informed analysis. Uh, Mario Markov says, what are your favorite anime? 
Well, lately there's been absolutely bugger all contests. Chainsaw Man and Spy Family are the two anime that absolutely win my spurt of approval. I also enjoyed Vinland Saga Season 2, I think that was like a good few months ago now, right? And uh, Bucky the Rock and stuff like that. I haven't really had much time to watch any new stuff, unfortunately. There's too many people launching goddamn smartphones. Uh, Kith Dihara says, those who want to see Textbert's collection, um, which, which collection? There's no collection. I mean, I certainly don't have any hard drives loaded up with super strength illegal hentai hidden in a secret compartment in the attic. And that would just be tomfoolery. NTFC Phil says, you literally just described me. I even live in Milton Keynes. So I'm guessing Phil is referring to this clip. I'm running out of time as well, so last couple of comments. Um, Bergball says, Whenever I watch Techspert, I feel like I'm too young to be watching an old guy talking about being drunk 24-7, while also being too old to watch someone making toilet jokes. I mean, I think you've hit it on the head there. My problem is that I basically cater to zero tastes. My entire demographic is a single, middle-aged, emotionally stunted, alcoholic dude who loves knob gags and also affordable Chinese phones. And he probably lives in Milton Keynes, the poor sod, so he's got nothing better to do than watch shit like this on YouTube all day. And what can I say, Phil? I'm sure Milton Keynes is absolutely lovely. Mythic Sons says, A part of me is imagining Chris as the next Doctor in Doctor Who, landing the TARDIS upside down and saving the universe by getting the Daleks and the Cybermen pissed. I mean, yes, of course, if I had the ability to travel through time and space, the entire universe at my fingertips, I would absolutely 100% go on a bloody massive bender. Now, to be honest, I'd be perfectly happy just traveling back to Sunderland in the late 1990s where I actually had some hair on my head, my shoulder wasn't completely f***ed, and you could pay 10 quid for all you can drink in some grotty basement nightclub. I mean, fair enough. I think the only drinks that were included in that particular offer were a Latvian lager, which actually made you go physically blind, and an even more horrendous knockoff version of Smirnoff Ice, which actually removed the lining of your throat as you drank it. And it was probably just actually bleach, but, you know, for 10 quid, you can't be too picky, eh? Maca Gaming X says, The only thing stopping me from getting a Pixel phone is the chip. Everything else is great. The camera, software, design, yada yada. I mean, yeah, I, you know, I understand that Google's main focus is AI. That's a race that it's absolutely desperate to win at all costs, even if it's a race that about four consumers are actually bothered about. In fact, it's kind of the tech equivalent of the pantomime horse race. You've got likes of Microsoft, Google, etc. all charging along in their funny costumes and everyone just standing there staring in morbid curiosity. Anyway, massively out of time, so better make these the last couple of comments. Uh, Adrian Woolley says, My ring hurts. Let me guess, you kind of tripped and fell over a bit onto your mum's favourite bedtime toy. Happens to us all, fella. Lee, 1188 UK says, You can take the lad out of Newcastle and all that. I'm just... I'm just not even. And Saturn Blue says, What is a chocolate starfish? I mean, maybe ask Adrian that one. Although, actually, maybe don't. It's a bit of a sore point, literally. But on Tish, etc. Uh, but anyway, a massive thank you to everyone who commented last week. Please do scribble down your thoughts, your theories, your whatever the f goes through your head at night. All the really nasty, grotty stuff, definitely. Just do bung them all down below, and we'll try and get through as many of those as possible next week. And speaking of next week, next week, next week, what the f is next week? Uh, next week, um, oh Christ, literally, because it's Easter. How the F did that happen? That's crazy. So we're pretty much practically into April then. That is terrifying. And thankfully a pretty quiet week next week on the tech shenanigans, so as I say, hoping to work on the Pixel 8 Pro uh, full-on review, the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra full-on review, which again, I haven't quite got around to just yet. It's been that kind of year. And honestly, it has been because it's been busy. I haven't just been face down in a puddle of my own bodily fluids the entire time. Anyway, have yourselves a bloody wonderful weekend, you lovely lot. Please do put subscribe, ding that notifications bell, tell all your mates about this showerish if you don't like them very much, I guess. And see you on the flip side. Love you!